Hey everybody, two alpha gals here. I'm Debbie Nichols. And I'm Candace Mathis. And you're listening to In the Tall Grass, where we're sharing stories of reinvention, resilience, and rediscovering joy. Whether it's facing alpha gal syndrome or any other redefining chapter of life, we all have to learn how to navigate the journey through the tall grass. So here we go. I don't know if y'all heard that. that awesome. What that was, was the four of us, Candace and myself, and two very special guests that we have here with us today. Very special. Very special. <laughs> got two alpha dudes, and we're here toasting with an alpha sink drink to do a little year in review episode for you all, introducing you to our husbands, my husband. Hello, hello. Mark Nichols. And my husband, Lee Mathis. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for indulging us today. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> it was the bourbon that brought him, I guess. Uh-huh. Bourbon. Always. We'll sit for bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> so what we were thinking when we came up with this idea to do this episode was we kind of wanted to look back on this past year, primarily because over the last year, particularly the last six months, really, We've seen such enormous amount of growth, both into alpha gals and in alpha gal syndrome, both awareness, you know, just seeing it pop up other places, hearing people talking about it, knowing people who know people who have it. And so we wanted to look back, but we thought it might provide some insight for those of you out there who are living with it, or more importantly, this time, maybe living with someone who is living with it Mm -hmm. to introduce you to our husbands so they can talk a little bit about their perspective. So that's why we're here tonight. So we wanted to start out by asking the two of you, if you can share a little bit about what it's been like living with your alpha gal for all the time that we've been sick from the time that we didn't know up until the time that we found out with our diagnosis to now. So can you each share a little insight as to what that has been like? Lee, you go first. (laughs) Um... I even read through that question earlier today. <clears throat> it's been a roller coaster. There's a lot of highs, a lot of lows, um, a lot of questioning my sanity right after I question yours <laughs> um, frequently. <laughs> <laughs> there is this great unknown, you know, of what's going on. And <clears throat> this is the love of my life, and she's in a real bad spot. And I'm, I'm helpless. Even even now that we know what's going on, she starts having some reaction of some sort. We had a sip of wine last night. It might not have been real safe, and and she started breaking out. And I was like, well, you know, here we are. Merry Christmas, everybody. So yeah, it's just kind of walking down this tunnel, and you don't know if the light at the end is going to be a freight train or not on a daily basis. Yeah. So and that's both prior to and after the diagnosis, but a lot less a lot less tunnels um, since the diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was hoping you were going to say. Well, I just got, you know, I got thrown on the track. So maybe <laughs> we have a brain reference. A real big difference from being thrown on the track, yeah. sort of being on the track, but knowing sure. how to jump off. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Good way to put it. Yeah. What about you? Fine. Wow. Lee took all the good ones. Yeah. Roller coaster, <laughs> the train track with the lake coming at you. Um, I'm going to reference the abyss, the oh, great goodness. unknown, mm. because it's been a long period of not having any answers and inconsistency and times where things were good. And then times when things were really bad and didn't have answers and didn't know what was going to happen next and how that affected the entire family and pulling together and trying to provide support even before she was diagnosed. So it was, it was a journey, Mm -hmm. definitely a journey continues to be a journey, but now at least the journey is a little more, mapped we have a map yeah yeah i love that you pulled the journey piece into it too because i think that's how candace and i still look at it very much as this is just another step on our journey right like this is just where we go next and we don't really know exactly what it looks like ever and we don't know what speed bumps or you know what what roller coasters are ahead of us what freight mm-hmm. trains are ahead of us what abyss we might face <laughs> ahead of us but we keep trying to move forward and Candace and I always say, breathe and follow the path, just yeah. breathe and follow the path and, and hope that all the steps that we're putting into place and all the things that we're trying to learn and share with other people are going to make that journey even a tiny bit easier. 
And I think this speaks to the fact that we're still on this journey very much, right? right? Like it'd be nice to be here and tell everybody <laughs> who's listening that we're on the other side, but it's not, it's not that way, but it's nice to know that the abyss isn't quite so deep mm -hmm. when, when we face it, we know how to walk around it sometimes with a freight train. We do know how to jump off the tracks at times. And I was going to kind of circle back to what you both were saying with kind of the abyss and the freight train and <laughs> all the things, but I think it, it kind of shows where we are now because Debbie and I have both had reactions within the past like couple of weeks yeah. that even if an EpiPen is necessary, you have a plan in place, you know, kind of what to do. Or when I started having a reaction last night, I knew what to do. And I think in the beginning of like the unknown and not knowing how to navigate that, it brought about this level of anxiety and panic and all of that, that we don't necessarily have anymore. I mean, it's still scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. going through those things that I think sure. over time and navigating this for four years where we are now, we're in a much better place mentally, I think with it to handle when things pop up because they're, yeah. I mean, I think inevitably they do. Oh, they absolutely do. <laughs> we just mentioned it. Mark can attest that I had to give myself my EpiPen just a couple of weeks ago. I think though you're right. And I think there is still uncertainty, but there's so much less uncertainty, mm -hmm. right? We <laughs> don't know when we're necessarily going to react or what's going to trigger reactions sometimes, but we know what to do in those situations a whole lot better than we did four years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And, and we know too. I right. Mean, you know, we, we were chatting prior to recording about, you know, Candace has a tendency to go to the farthest reaching worst case scenario immediately <laughs> somebody's in a ditch somewhere kind of concept but you that know, never happens with that no i can't imagine <laughs> yeah, imagine it would right and uh here we are just calm cool right like, it's like hey drinking our time <laughs> it's it's one of those okay well have you taken you you know have you started your protocol that's yeah. that's some can cancel text she's like i'm just feeling really woozy i'm at target Okay. Have you taken anything? Have you have you been exposed to anything? You know, at, at least being the the common sounding board of let's get back to zero and start with what do you think you got exposed to or mm -hmm. contaminated with? What do you do next? What do you right. do next? Do I need to come pick you up? Mm -hmm. Does our unlicensed child need to drive you home? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> She, she does good at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, even the abyss is not as big for me. And I'm sure it's not for you um, right. because you have these little things that you can be like, huh, well, last time we did X, Y, and Z, you know, you got know, a playbook. It, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. A little yeah. bit of a playbook. Crisis averted. That's neat for me to hear too, mm -hmm. because I think, especially when I'm in those moments of abyss, I'm not really thinking about you. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, dagger in the heart. <laughs> no. And in the back, are you kidding me? Okay. I'm going to admit that, right? This is authentic, right? Yeah. I'm thinking about how am I going to avoid dying or ending up at the hospital or using my EpiPen or any of this range of options mm -hmm. that I have. But the truth is, is that you all are facing this abyss very much as much as we are. It's just from a different perspective. Yeah. And so I think that's that's good for, for us to hear. I think it's really good for everyone out there to hear whether you're living with alpha or living with someone with alpha mark mentioned the, the the i think you i heard you say it so <laughs> words in your mouth mark mentioned the changing of plans and stuff and that you know that abyss is what i feel it, it's not i know she's gonna be okay we've got the, the worst case scenario i get to jam her in the leg with an epi pain you're not allowed uh, wait, 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 wait. Goes in the leg yeah Mark, please. The jugular. I mean, yeah, that's very places. But, you know, we were in Colorado and Candace had several reactions. We had to go to the ER a few times out there. And it's like, okay, we're 2,500 miles from home. We got to leave the kids in an Airbnb and go, I don't know where. I don't right. know how long we're going to be there. And just, you know, so there's this, there's this abyss of, hey, not just the, the, the sweet little alpha gal over there in crisis. It's like, okay, there's, there's, other dependents and and other things that are going on that, that we kind of get to juggle with a little bit as well. So sure. it can be abyss mold. 
abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean, that kind of fits into like vulnerability and sure. speaking our needs. Like I think Debbie and I, you're when you're in this situation, one of the things that we really talk a lot about is is doing just that. Mm-hmm. And it's probably the hardest thing any human Agreed. can do is like really being vulnerable, really speaking up for yourself. And it, but it's also been a pivotal player in where we are now. So has that been a challenging thing for the two of you to accept this diagnosis and being vulnerable yourselves? And what one piece of advice would you give to a spouse or a parent or a partner, anyone caring for someone with alpha-gal with the vulnerability piece? Million dollar piece of advice. Million no, no, dollar piece of advice. <laughs> keep keep good whiskey on hand. It's a hard, it's a hard <laughs> question. I'm going to take it first. Go ahead. Uh, give you time to think. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to um, I'm going to say listen and learn because it's not consistent and it is evolving and changing. Now there are some things that tr- that are consistent as far as what triggers an episode or mm-hmm. in, 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 in certain issues, but I think being supportive, being a co advocate listening and learning. And so those are four things, I think, four words of wisdom then. Support, listen, learn. Advocate. Advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can agree with all four of those. Um, The, the vulnerable aspect of it is I'd like to think I have it all figured out and at any certain point of any day, I can be proven wrong and having to add to everything else that's on my plate the, the vulnerable aspect of that is saying, Shug, I know you're reacting. Give me just one minute so I can get this taken care of so I can focus fully on you. That, that, that's that been hard for me because I'm, I'm still trying to keep, you know, irons in every fire. And then at, at some point you're like, you know what? Let that fire go. It, it'll go into a raging roar if it needs to. I'm needed over here. And and that's um that's been something that I've I've had to learn how to do. Um, and just say, you know what, I, I can't go to the office right now. The, the children are going to have to take care of themselves right now. She's in crisis mode and I'm going to have to take her to the ER. But but the, the vulnerable aspect, too, and, and we'll lean into that a little bit, is is taking a stand on your behalf mm-hmm. of saying, listen, I, we've been in this together a little bit more so than somebody outside looking in. And, yeah, this is real. And I'm, I'm sorry we need to have you remove these candles or we were in, in Charlotte picking our son up the other night and I had to walk back into a restaurant that is a very safe restaurant that we eat at frequently when we're in Charlotte and go in and say, guys, hey, there's some grill marks right here. Please, can you just ensure for me that this grill was clean? No, we can't. I said, well, we're going to have to do something else. Can I order another one? You know, and being that advocate and I was wore out and I was tired and I slammed the door in the car and and. And did but, a really awkward walk inside. I mean, it was awesome. Briefly. You, was you, 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 came, you came through. I came through. I came through and I, you know, I breathed deep between the door <laughs> and the restaurant. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things that you get to check yourself frequently to say, hey, am, am I showing up as supportive as I can be? And if I'm not, I need to check myself because um, I'm needed right now kind of thing. And there's a lot of factors that influence that too, right? Like I think we talk about <laughs> we talk about kids, we talk yeah. about other family members who might be involved. You know, we're in different places too, right? We've got teenagers who can take care of themselves most of the time. You've got jobs that do allow you to step away in a crisis, you know, and and so there are so many factors that don't necessarily look like other people's factors too that can compound these situations and <laughs> um and complicate them. I'm sure. Agreed. Well, you just talked a little bit about a restaurant experience and so much of what those of us with Alpha Gal deal with has to do with food, right? You know, it's not easy going out to restaurants. Even now, like Mm -hmm. we run into these issues, right? We can be, we can, we can take all the steps that we need to take and it's still a risky experience at times. Can you guys talk more about some of your good or bad experiences taking us out to eat go ahead mr mark nichols oh wow <laughs> oh let's let's go okay all right well i would say first you know debbie is a really good cook she cooks for our family of four and does a really diverse words aren't coming menu menu yeah, yeah very diverse menu 
Um, our kids eat very diverse. And so we actually don't eat out a lot because Debbie enjoys cooking and is a really good cook. But And and I did not pay him. <laughs> so nope. thank you very much. Nope. And it's not the whiskey talk. No, I've not had enough whiskey. We do have the, uh -huh. <laughs> but the, sometimes the challenge is when we're traveling <laughs> or going to visit friends, um, going to meet friends at restaurants, you know, our friends are all very knowledgeable of what alpha gal is and what are some of the triggers to alpha gal. And so, you know, we were in Northern Virginia for Thanksgiving and a whole group of friends, we were heading out to a Mexican restaurant before we were going to the movies. And, um, I think there was what, 18 of us maybe, or 19 of us sitting at a, it was a lot. in a restaurant and, uh, the server comes over and, um, you know, we're looking at the menu and the first thing that we do, it's just kind of baked into, into the, the procedure now whenever we go out to a restaurant is, you know, Debbie has some fairly significant allergies and sometimes the servers kind of, they almost feel like they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. And, you know, that's where the stick it to the ticket is really helpful of, you know, Debbie gave it to the server and, you know, identifying where significant allergies are. And sometimes we, you know, we do it kind of jokingly, but we say, no, no, no. Like if, if she has exposure, she might be heading out in an ambulance mm -hmm. style of, and so, you know, making it very clear of, of, of the needs and the, and the separate cooking services and everything that are needed for her food. And the waiter was great. Um, they actually cooked Debbie's meal on a, on a clean surface away from some of the other things. And let us know that when and, they came and, back. And let us know that. And, you know, it was, it is sometimes we have really good experiences and with wait staff, and sometimes we have really poor experiences, but this, this started off being a really good one. And then uh, as Debbie got her plate and started eating and it came out separate um, and she started eating, I think, was it black beans mm -hmm. and took a big old scoop full of <laughs> black beans. And uh, after taking that first bite, notice as you dug down in the black beans that there was some like little white flecks, little white flecks. Exactly. So I don't know if that was cojita or what type of cheese that might have been, but there was cheese in the dish. And so we quickly called the waiter over and asked, is there cheese in this? And he apologized profusely and said, oh yes, you know, I was focused on the main meal. I didn't think about the sides that were added to the, to the plate. Um, but even in that situation, I don't think he understood the gravity of what had just occurred. Yeah. Um, you know, within 15 or 20 minutes, Debbie was having, you know, two, mm -hmm. three different reactions. Yeah. Um, and so she left the table and went outside and went to Wegmans. I had to run to Wegmans because I... Which was right around the corner from yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. I had... not, a, not a sponsor of the podcast yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But yeah, I needed more of the, the Zantac because that had been a new addition to my toolkit. I had my other things with me, but Candace had introduced me to that. And we realized what a good what a good piece of the toolkit that was. It was really helping me. And so I wanted that on hand mm -hmm. at that moment. So I went to Wegmans with my son. Mm hmm yeah. And, and all of our friends at the table, you know, they're all like, okay, what, what, what's happening? What's going to go, what's going to happen next? You know, it was, does she need to have the EpiPen? Do we need to take her to the hospital? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the unknown, right? Cause it's different. Every time your reaction might be slightly different. So mm -hmm. we just have to keep an eye on her. And um, so we were, it was toward the end of the meal. Um, and I went up and I talked with the um, manager on duty and just, it's a good opportunity just to share the the gravity of the situation to bring her and, and, and hopefully to educate the um, kitchen staff about the severity of alpha gal mm -hmm. and um, how exposure, even that small little amount can have a profound effect on those living with alpha gal. And so mm -hmm. the manager was extremely apologetic and, um, and took that as an opportunity to, to, to verbally say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk with all of my kitchen staff about this. And so hopefully that will trickle down to the next time that somebody comes in and yeah. maybe uses a, a stick it to the ticket or, or, or mentions alpha gal, that there'll be more awareness of the separation and the needs mm -hmm. and the severity of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was probably our most recent, not mm -hmm. so great yeah. um, incident out at restaurants. Um, you said bad and good, whatever you want to share. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I agree with you. Like, 
I think Debbie and I both love to cook, right? Mm-hmm. So it's easier and safer. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times uh-huh. tastes it, better <laughs> than yeah. going out to eat, right? It's like, yeah. we've kind of become snobby in that way. It, <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to say that, but because we love to cook. And right. I think, I do think about people that don't love to cook. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of people that do not like cooking the way that we do. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to navigate that, you know, like that's difficult if you're relying on eating out or these other things. And hopefully we want to do some more cooking you mm-hmm. know, classes eventually, or just to get people. We actually did that with, with a friend last week or uh-huh. the week before that was yeah. super fun. And he is in his forties and has never really cooked a home cooked meal for himself. And he was so excited for the very simple things that we did, but. And I think impressed with his own capability, right? right. He was really proud of himself yeah. for what he made. And um, I think that's really great for people in his situation to see too, that it isn't that hard to make delicious food at home. Right. Fast. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Cause even, you know, like what Lee had shared earlier about this one restaurant in Charlotte that we've gone to a lot of times and you know there's two or three restaurants that are kind of in our circulation when we have to go to charlotte and this one i was like exhausted like by the time i walked out of there and i had gone through the whole spiel myself my son and i went in and i had done the whole thing and i come out and there are grill marks on my tofu and i was like shit like (laughs) i don't want it on the grill you know i (laughs) <laughs> well like you know, <laughs> I, get my time. I get my time it. Say it. It. Say it. but I did not want it grilled mm-hmm. and I had specified that Specific like things. I need this cooked separately in a pan I talked to the cook back there and so, you know, I, I know after talking to Chef Joel mm-hmm. about navigating restaurants, you know, I do feel like Debbie and I kind of walked away from that conversation with a different perspective of seeing the kitchen side, right? Where right now we're in a time where everyone is extremely understaffed and there are just all of these other factors. Mm-hmm. And so I try to give grace to that, but that was where I had to lean on you and say, we just jump right on my shoulders. It wasn't much of a lean. Emotionally, we had been through it. had been a really long day. So yeah. I and so I, I said, I can't go back in there and talk one more time yeah. to these yeah. people. Like, you've got to do it for me. And I don't know. So I'm saying all of this to say that I've, I've found tried and true restaurants like the Living Kitchen in Charlotte and ones that are vegan. Like, I've tended to go that direction more so because the room for error is really minuscule yeah. you know like it's like we have to navigate just a few ingredients versus like steak cooking on a grill yeah, plus right. all of the things right. and in a way that's a solution for those people who don't necessarily like cooking mm-hmm. or want to cook find the restaurants that are safe where the risk is minimal right and lean on those places and you know it makes me think also of our conversation with chef travis the really good chefs will lean into that experience, right? We'll offer to make you something. I go into restaurants and will say, you know, I don't really care what I eat, but this is what I can't eat. Can you make me something delicious? And the good chefs, I know you've had that experience too, will bring you something beautiful, right? delicious, amazing. That Beyond chicken on a salad? Yes. Yes. More than chicken on a salad. And it might not even be on the menu. Mm -hmm. Like we've had that experience where my dish was not on the menu and Lee was actually jealous. Right. (laughs) Right. Find places that'll that'll do that because as we all know, alpha-gal and other food allergies is all about sacrifice, right? We say that all the time because it is. So we deserve to be a little pampered. Right. Where we can. Where we can. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Lee, did you uh, want to add any more to the I restaurant? I do get to. Uh, anything she can eat, I do kind of hoard it down. So it's always, <laughs> a, always good for me. But even the, the last week when we were down in Charlotte, you know, and I went back in, everybody was just, we were so sorry we didn't make this right, this and the other. The way the restaurant set out, I was sitting there chatting with the gentleman who was, who was going to be rebaking tofu and this, that, and the other. And we made eye contact every time he turned around. And I wasn't trying to tell the guy how to do his job. But he's like, I'm going to change gloves for you. And he changed gloves, went and washed his hands. He came through, took the knife he was going to check it with, went and cleaned it. 
took the thermometer out so he could check the internal temperature of tofu, which, you know, I'd never seen that done. And I was like, hey, <laughs> kind of, he's like, oh my gosh, I got to scrub this too, don't I? I was like, yeah, we don't, we don't need to, um, Cross don't need to, the- yeah, don't need to go out of here uh, with an EpiPen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So every little single thing he was, he was constantly being reminded because I was standing there and I didn't, I didn't want to be that guy. But when you said y'all went out with 18 people, I cringed. Yeah. It's like, Oh my gosh. I was in, I, after we got married before I taught school, I, I was a wait staff at a restaurant and it's hard to keep three sure. people straight. So right. at 18, I'm like, Oh gosh, yep. That's just a nightmare on this side of things. So yeah, we'll have more intimate dinners out with with a couple close friends than than big group gatherings like that or dear friend of mine got married um he called and said hey you know i know cancer got a lot of stuff i'm standing here with the guy who's going to make every single individual meal what can what word can i tell him vegan anyway we get there they've got the, the <laughs> love you drew love you staff um we get there she has a little thing that says vegan meal. They bring her over a vegan meal and she's, she eats it and it's absolutely phenomenal. She was blown away and it was safe and everything else. And about 30 minutes later, she's like, all right, I didn't know if I was going to be able to eat that. I got to run to the car real quick. I'm like, why? And I have a picture at their wedding of Candace in the back of the car, working down some smell like I'll say food. Just in case, just in case. She oh, it had was, a, she it had was a, delicious. I love you, Drew and Stephanie. Delicious. It was, it was delicious. phenomenal. It was. But it was the tiniest portion of vegetable. <laughs> and, we were, like, and we were dancing hard. Hold on, time out. I need more than like some carrots. <laughs> I need some protein. I, yeah, I was all up in the trunk eating some chicken. <laughs> Should we talk about how you have to just suck off your pride sometimes? Yeah. Eat chicken out uh-huh. of the trunk of your car. <laughs> oh, we, we went ice skating today. Yeah. And, and we made some some phenomenal tofu last night. And Candace had it. And it was frozen. I mean, it was literally solid. <laughs> put it with an ice put pack. Put it with an ice pack. And Not it's, thinking. It's, 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 so it was yeah, a you solid gotta, block of tofu. It's just a sickle. Hey. Right. <laughs> but, you know, you just got to do, you gotta do what you got to do. <laughs> That's right. You do what you got to do. And yeah. you do reach a point where you can laugh about it. Well, there've been times when we've been traveling too. And, and, uh, we'll just, instead of going to a restaurant, we'll just go to a grocery store. Yeah. Because yeah. we know at a grocery store, we can find things that you can eat. You can they don't them. need to be warmed up in a microwave. They're just, the ingredients. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, we take the kids in and, or, t- or we go in. We, we, last time I think we were in a grocery store, you and I were traveling up to Northern Virginia on 81 and, uh-huh. and uh, we were leaving late and we were trying to figure out, think about, okay, where do we stop on 81 to eat? And, uh, Keep going. Sorry, the dog's drinking in the back. No, that's actually me drinking. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> Lee, go easy on the bourbon. Come on now. But we were on 81 and we stopped at the grocery store. Yes. And that was our our dinner, that you know, our romantic dinner in the grocery store. Yes. Mm-hmm. Actually, but it was fantastic. It was kind of funny because we it was at Trader Joe's that we stopped out and we don't have one around here. So we're all four of us walking through the grocery store with our arms full of stuff because we're like, we're just going to go in and find something for mom to eat. Right. And we're like, all walking out. Like, a car and a half. Yeah. 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 And that was something we always did. I mean, I have, I've had a wheat allergy for 15 years. So Whole Foods or Earth Fair, you know, just being on the East Coast, I know Earth Fair, there's only a few stores, but um, those were like our stopping points when we traveled. It's like we sought out Whole Foods Mm -hmm. because their bar was like clearly labeled, or I could speak to someone about how it had been cooked. And so that was kind of a godsend in a way of like, knowing how to navigate that before alpha gal because yeah. then it just like it just continued it's like what we had always done and i love some grocery store oh, I Wait, that's, that's well a- i think that plays into the like loving to cook and yeah and true stuff. but i think this also segues kind of nicely and asking you all tell us honestly are you comfortable going into a grocery store buying food for us? What are the difficulties there? What are you, are you good with reading labels? Are you? We live pretty close. So if I need to run back because I got the wrong thing, I'm, <laughs> I'm good at that too. But they uh, both bought us corn nuts on the 99 cent sale. Do you remember that? Love corns. Love corn, yeah. love corn nuts. It was like fried corn kernels or something. Yes. They're absolutely delicious. And but they both came home with that Kroger 99. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Kit, are you good with reading labels? 
I'm good with reading labels, but I honestly, it's kind of like playing the lottery. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I go in and I'm like, Debbie's going to love this, or this yeah, is going to be perfect. And even though I've read the labels, I'll come home she'll be, and she'll say, no, that has such and such in it. And mm -hmm. I can't have that. Mm -hmm. So Debbie, again, being the, the cook in the house does a lot of the grocery shopping. So I would say uh, I'm comfortable to agree. There are go-to items that I know I can get, yeah. but there's many a times when I find things that I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be perfect, you know, and then I bring it home and me and the kids end up eating. Wah, wah. Yes. Epic fail. Yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Insert sound effects. <laughs> He's been dying to do that all <laughs> night. <laughs> as hard as it is, I really appreciate you even continuing to try. Like, because you do, and even if when I can't eat it, and it's like it. super sad and disappointing, the fact that you were at the grocery store and you thought you tried and thought that I might li love it, but it had something wild in it, like spirulina that might- mm, Spirulina, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> that might send me over. So I just want you to know that I appreciate that. Aww. What about, what about you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like one constant failed Christmas present after another, and I'll do better next year. It's okay. The kids had to eat my <laughs> the stuff out of my stocking this year. I got the cocoa melts. That was I got oh, those. Oh yeah. I could the healthy those. Skittles though. Those were no. those, those had spiral. Yep. Yeah. 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 Stupid algae. Stupid ticks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm again what Mark said, there's some go-tos and I'm comfortable with those. Um like Cheo came home with some some oh, yeah. plant-based cheese not long ago and she's yeah. like, Nope, <laughs> sesame in it. Or because I have all these she, other she got everything cheese. else mm -hmm. too. And I was like, hmm, well, this is gonna be good on my know it's me. Well, yeah, yeah. And it I think that our extra allergies mm -hmm. are just that, right? Mm -hmm. Extra. Like we we overcomplicate things by accident because we do have these extra allergies, yeah. these extra issues that inflammatory or allergens or whatever, whatever they are that make your lives that much, that much more challenging. But you know that even in a small town where we live, relatively small town, you know, there's still certain stores that I know, like when I think of, I need to get you something, there are certain stores that I know mm -hmm. I can go into. And for the most part, Still, still playing the lottery, but I'm, odds are like 80 20. Yeah. Some right. of these stores yeah. are finding stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're really, <laughs> exactly. really like fortunate, I think. Even though we live in like a really small town, we have like two local health food stores mm -hmm. plus our, the chain stores. Mm -hmm. So we really don't go without. No, because you know? I know that if I can't get it at Kroger, I can get it at Eats or Anna Kate's. Right. I love that. Yeah. Because I know that. I mean, it's another step towards not going without. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I got her chocolate caramels for, I sure did. for the holidays. I sure did. Merry Christmas. Yep. Through those suckers pretty fast. Oh too. <laughs> They're so good. They're so good. So I guess aside from like grocery shopping, do do either of you find making meals? extra challenging or do you do you like to cook the meals uh like to cook the meals what is your go-to when i say hey honey what do you want for dinner yeah, kidding. oh chicken tetrazzini uh -huh. for 20 years it's chicken tet <laughs> and can we eat chicken tetrazzini there now? is one recipe we can eat if any of our listeners no, you have, have, a, have a safe chicken tetrazzini recipe we would love we to know converted it. a rachel ray chicken tet we did mushroom tetrazzini one time. It was the greatest thing ever. But that was before alcohol. All right. right. There's a ton of dairy in that. So dairy, I don't know how to dairy. convert that. So but if you get that mushroom stroganoff that you did, that's good. surely. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. Because that's, okay. that's true. Challenge accepted. So all I need you to do is convert that recipe and then I'll cook every day. <laughs> oh, that's recorded. Record every, <laughs> every day. Now we don't eat the same thing <laughs> every day. Mark, do you like to cook? Have you found it extra challenging? No, like the cook is in the world word light <laughs> i don't mind like i've i'm typically the grill person mm. right i do breakfasts and i do grill stuff and you know i enjoy meat mm. i love burgers i love steak i love all the things that i can't cook around <laughs> that steak <laughs> and 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 our kids like meat so you know i i generally cook meat outdoors don't cook it indoors um but if, if you were to say what's what's a go-to meal that I 
could create for the family to include Debbie without having to have a separate dish or cooking on a separate surface for Debbie, then I'd probably say something with Mexican, some, some sort of Mexican dish with um, ground turkey or pasta, gluten-free pasta and yeah. good marinara sauce. So on the grill, you make some killer salmon. Yeah, I do like you know, fish. Some of yep. those Dizzy Pig tuna. Oh yeah, the Dizzy Pig. Yeah, shout out to Dizzy Pig. Yes. <laughs> you guys introduced yep. us to Dizzy Pig. No, but all I mean, yeah, I mean, our whole cabinet over there is filled with Dizzy Pig seasonings, and whether it's you know chicken or fish or um, you know, I love smoking meats on the smoker outside. So you know, it's I yeah. don't walk outside. I managed to slip that into the Alpha Gal episode here. That's great. I love smoking meat. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've done that before where I've cooked, cooked on aluminum foil, you know, separate mushroom or separate chicken before I put the meat on and and then use the warmer inside here and keep Debbie's meal safe until the, the, the outside meals are ready. But Much appreciated. And you've done a great job of that because we've eaten yeah, here yeah, many yeah. times and I appreciate that. Yeah. So thank you for, you know, I mean, you guys were one of the first places I ate. I mean, after my diagnosis, you know, right. so... That makes a world of difference too. When you're eating, when you find places that you know, people that you know can cook for you, yeah. even if it's limited, even if, even if I'm going to a friend's house and they're making me pasta and sauce, right? Yeah. But they know what to look for on the right. ingredients. That's huge because it makes me feel a little less like I'm missing out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, and that's, that's kind of like, you know, what we said earlier about being an advocate, you know, I, I have a employee that recent, a uh, new, relatively newly hired employee that invited us over for dinner, uh, members of my team and and their spouses or significant others. And, uh, you know, just had to tell her, Hey, you know what, these are the allergies that, <laughs> you know, we need to be mindful of and, you know, offering we can bring our own separate dish mm-hmm. so that it's not an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this particular employee was like, no, not, not at all. No, I'm going to make something. You just tell me what I need to do and, and, and I'll do it. And so, you know, it was really nice and easy and, and very supportive of that. But at the same time, you know, if we needed to bring something, it really was no inconvenience. It was no problem to yeah. be able to do that. And so that's just sort of now sort of baked into our sure. culture of, food and, and going out with friends sometimes that, you know, we might not be able to go out and, and go to a house where they're cooking meals that are alpha gal safe. So bringing something separate is not an inconvenience at all. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And that way we know that he can have a good time and have fun and not be worried that she's had exposure and then yeah. spiral down. It's from- a very welcome expectation. Yes. I mean, we, we expect to bring our own food and that is not a burden on us. Right. right. Uh, yep. That's more of a burden to wonder mm-hmm. where you got it. It's it's really it's peanut butter is a joke in our house because it's always the go-to because so many people in our house love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. For me, it's almond butter. So. <laughs> there are three staples that must be in our house at any given time. The number one, Chunky peanut butter. Chunky. <laughs> Number two, high pulp orange juice. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> See almond thing. extract. These go. might as well have been written into our wedding vows. Look at the only three things at any Wait, given time. time I'm, I'm thrown. Why uh, almond, almond extract? extract. Because I, just go with it. Because Mark's mom, Mark, Mark's mom, late mom, no. used to bake cookies all the time. Actually, she was the best cook I think I've ever known. Lots of butter, lots <laughs> of butter. cream of mushroom soup, lots of lots of stuff like that. But she's a great Southern cook. But her cookies are out of this world, and she would always double or triple the almond extract in them and they were good but i think the smell is reminiscent of her yep. cookies Aww. and there smell almond extract I love it yep. have you made any of her recipes alpha gal safe like any of her cookies oh i don't know if i've done the well see the tricky part with the cookies is making them gluten free yeah. that's been the tricky okay, part we need, we yeah need you and i need to put the baking and the flour yeah. down so we'll need to do that i have made some of her recipes especially prior to being dairy free. I made a lot of them yeah. safe, but now that I'm dairy free, it's a little bit trickier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to, we need to chat. About mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. do that. Okay. Ooh, yes. I will oh. try cookies. All right. Next episode. <laughs> You're on. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I just, and I have made them for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I heard mm-hmm. that. I just can't. Wow. Yeah. The butter and the okay. So talking about like positivity and silver linings, what have been some of the things that 
you have found as silver linings through this journey? Like, is it new recipes, new experiences? Like, what are the things that you're grateful for through through this? All right, so I, I, I'm going to get a little uh, little real here okay. on this one. Do it. Um, I would say silver lining has definitely been that the two of you have found each other and connected. Oh, oh you're right. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whiskey, you, but you guys, you know. That. Yeah, we can do it. Good friends. <laughs> Yep. Solid support structure, you know, just two really good people that have challenging situations and learning how to deal with them and live their best life. And so it's having that, you know, friendship and support structure, I think has been, it's been really good for this one. I'm sure it's probably been really good for you as yeah. well. So, totally. so I think that's been, you know, that's definitely been the, the best part of it. I love that so much. I do too. Did I earn brownie points? Yes. <laughs> They're both welling up. I love that so much because, you know, Candace and I are in our mid 40s, right? Yeah. Early mid 40s. And and we've done a lot of things. Early Not- 40s. <laughs> Some of us are in our early, early. 40s. You've done a lot of things. We've- <laughs> lived a lot of life. We've lived a lot of life, meaning we graduated from school with one degree we've done one career we've been stay-at-home moms we've been social workers we've been birth doulas we've been you know all these different things that we've done and I think for really you know aside from the whole stay-at-home mom thing the mothering thing for the first time as far as a career goes we both feel like we have been called to this and this is exactly where we're supposed to be like this is the reason that all this has happened it feels very divine or from the universe or whatever you want to call it. And I think we acknowledge that Mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. I think that's really important because it's not always comfortable to lean into it, but that's what we're we're finding we have to do. Right. Right. Yeah. That's where we are now. Yeah, absolutely. No. And I love that support's huge. I mean, I, I think that's why we felt called to step into this because I don't know personally, aside from you, Lee. Oh, bless me, Taurus. Right. <laughs> your heart. But I, I mean, I don't like at my, at my mo- most vulnerable, at my sickest, like I felt pulled to you. Yeah. And, you know, I had other friends that I've known here for 10 years and they, mm-hmm. but they were like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, I just, I don't know. I just couldn't. And I think on my end, that was a godsend in its own, Mm -hmm. because if I hadn't watched you go through that, I wouldn't have walked into my doctor and said, I need you to test me for this. I don't (laughs) care what you think. And here. Yeah. And to be on the other side of that, I think to know what it feels like not to feel as sick as we were. Yeah. Like it just, I just know that those things fell into place for a reason. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm grateful for that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I can recall all of these, all of these experiences of calling Debbie when I'm trying to pick my child up from school and I can't drive because I'm like, in I'm an grateful episode. for that too. Cheers to that, my Cheers. friend. Cheers. Drink to that. <laughs> and, it, and it really is. There's a vulnerability as a spouse that that other people are going to fill a void when when you need it mm-hmm. that I can't feel. I, I, and I'm, I'm reminded of our second child's birth. Uh, a dear friend of mine, love you, Arma, was was offered to be our doula and I couldn't do that. I was like hanging out, watching Candace rock in the chair and she and Irma were in their little dance thing and Irma had to use the bathroom and I tried to fill in. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he touched my, he touched my knee. I was like, get off yeah. my knee. And I was like, holy crap. You know, yes, so it's a similar thing. I haven't experienced anaphylaxis, but Debbie has. So y'all got something y'all can, y'all can wrap yeah. back and forth and you know where each other is mm-hmm. and in a place that I can know as a spouse. So. Yeah. All right, Lee. Oh, blessings. For me, the, yeah. the silver lining is a little more personal. I, I had four grandparents who either died from or with cancer. My father had lymphoma eight, 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and all the research I did as a holistic practitioner was what can I do? You know, I'm a big fan of epigenetics and every decision you make is an investment in your future. So what can I do that, that, you know, well, hopefully I won't, my children won't have to go through what I went through when my dad had cancer kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And everything I read and all the, you know, 
scientific research or anecdotal. I don't care. Everything pointed to a plant-based lifestyle mm -hmm. um, and it had for a long time. And then lo and behold, an old, old tickmeister over here <laughs> goes off <laughs> and you know, she, she picked red meat, which is, is proven to be carcinogenic. It, it kind of removed that from my life. And then, you know, about a year and a half ago, we were just like, I think we watched the game changers and there was a couple. Well, of I was in like this awful flare yeah, where I couldn't, I couldn't get out of anaphylaxis. It was yeah. every other week I was having to use my epi and I was at the ER and I was exhausted and tired of doing it. <laughs> you were exhausted. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, it is, it's disruptive for everyone it having it's to call it. him, yeah. you know, out of the office to go to the ER where I'm having to wake my teenage son up in the middle of the night when Lee's on a, uh, you know, a gone retreat. for a retreat and I'm puking and he had to take me to the ER. You know, it's, it's, it's traumatic for everyone. Yeah. I, you know, it's trauma for everyone. And sure. I was over it. Like what, what is the missing piece for me? Mm -hmm. Like, what can I do to take the step a little bit further? And I knew for whatever reason I was reacting to eggs because I ate them every morning and mm -hmm. every morning, mid morning, three hours later, I was feeling woozy. I was hoping you were going to say diarrhea. I was about to say it. Every <laughs> episode. Definitely <laughs> almost passed out naked on the toilet. Uh -huh. okay. I mean, we've all been and there, right? Like, <laughs> this is how I die. No, do not play a sound <laughs> bite. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was all right. It was <laughs> not <laughs> as calming as that. <laughs> It was pure hell. <laughs> <laughs> but that was when I, we did, we started listening um, to Rich Roll's right podcast right. and just other, you know, doing our own research. And we were like, let's try it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two weeks we gave ourselves. Mm -hmm. And thank God you did it with me. Because well, I don't think I would have done it myself. The, the silver lining is the accountability on that side for me. Yeah. Um, you know, um, hmm, yeah, I won't have... Uh, the the we had a, a friend of ours around the corner made some wasso uh, and yeah. she 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 knew candace has all this stuff so she shot her pictures of all the super ingredients sweet. levels super super sweet and it was absolutely delicious and carrageenan and one of the yeah and, that like, she pulled nope, in. Out. and it, she was nope i'm out i'm like God, this is good <laughs> a little rum in there I don't know. she's like do not kiss me <laughs> for a while and i was like <laughs> Oh, dang it. Yep. Well, you actually, you actually so said, good. okay, so for the seasoned Alpha Galler support guy, I don't know what, so what your title is, but he was like, it's just a little it's bit. A little uh, bit. <laughs> and I said, your little bit is going to kill me. Mm -hmm. So you want my tongue to swell? And like, mm -hmm. no, do not come near me with your carrageenan lips. <laughs> yeah, as I put on my uh, stinging dog vanilla opportunity for sponsorship hey does that work i need to it do does it does it's, it's really good, good but you Where know you i mean that at one of our local health food stores okay excellent that's all i need to know look i'm gonna tell you the best one is the one from colorado you gotta share that with me because i need something that's girl my uh my lips are phoenixville not loving this cold but it is you know i mean candace you know, I'll, I'll show up from the office or something and go in and she gives me one of those ridiculously awesome kisses that just bring me home this every is day. a g-rated podcast yeah, when, I, when i falls a little shy you know. I pg because you said it that oh yeah i did yeah you did naughty word. <laughs> but she'll kiss what and she jerks back she's like what you put on your your, your chapstick oh okay yeah. oh well, you best, but he's I've he's messed up before and he I sports bees yeah oh so, spiraling downward here we go. Okay, so now that we've covered silver lining, silver lining, I want to know, you know, we talk a lot about mental health and what we do for our own self-care and how we take care of our own mental health. I want to know if you guys have strategies that you employ to take care of your own mental health. Mary Lee own. is my bartender. There you go. And the excellent one he is. <laughs> when this is over, he'll make me another one on am <laughs> Do you, do you have things that you do for yeah. self-care yeah. to, to take care um, of yourself? I have recently taken up, taken up running. Mm. Um, not a runner by trade, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I rode bikes for a long time, rode bikes, and uh, kind of get into this place where your body takes over and it goes on autopilot and your brain's free to think. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm starting to find that with running. So 
for anybody out there that wants to run a meet. <laughs> New River Trail, 50K. Uh, I'm running the 25K. April oh, 25K. man, you go in it hard. You committed yourself yeah, now. I'm going to send it. I'm going to, well, it, that's public. Wow, yeah. I've yeah. a couple of posts, but uh, um, send it, send it kind of hard there. <laughs> Here you come. I think that's great. I, yeah. Yeah. One day I will run again. That's not something I've been, I felt good enough to do sure. yet, but I know what you mean. Like you reach that point where your mind just goes free and it's just, it just, it just starts from the inside and just spreads and you can just think. And I know what, I, when does I that happen? One that just started and I'm, I'm like, huh? when does that happen? After, after, after mile three. Really? Yeah. Yes. That's why I stopped usually about I've never made it there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it. Um, drawing. I've, I've oh, started drawing. Yeah, just kind of get there at the end of the day, and Candace will turn on one of them shows, and she's snoring in two minutes. So I think she's not. <laughs> what do so, you do? Anything, everything. Just kind of doodle, and I call it dinking. And um, his dinks so. are insane. You're like really talented. Uh, we're not talking about stick people hey, here. We're talking stick, about yeah, like my dinks are <laughs> one more game, girl. Oh, uh, you said it. <laughs> you did. And it's both. <laughs> Can't edit that one. <laughs> edit that out. Mm. You are really talented. Well, thank you. Thank you. Artist. It's fun. And you know, I, I watched my dad for years do the same thing. He would disappear and or sit right in front of you and just have a baseball game on with mm -hmm. no noise and Mm -hmm. How do you do that? But anyway, dad would do it. He'd draw and turn around. There's a picture. It's like, wow, that's really cool. So hmm. that is really cool. He does all it's kinds of things. Like he'll that. take pictures of like an owl. He just did an owl or he'll take a picture of a person on a show mm -hmm. and then like draw their face. Or I don't know. I mean, it's hmm. his doodles are dinks. Dinks. no it's ridiculous you're really really talented you have so. ridiculous dinks <laughs> i'm getting a t-shirt getting that tattooed somewhere uh-huh tramp stamp tramp stamp <laughs> ridiculous dinks all right mark how about you <laughs> do you have ridiculous dinks man i tell you so many dinks <laughs> really let's let's move on all right um yeah i mean i'm i'm one of those kind of always involved in a lot of different things. So I think probably my most consistent thing right now would probably be boxing, going to the local gym, yeah, that's a good one. hitting some bags, but we do a lot outdoors, you know, with very involved in our local scout troop. So, you know, a lot of hiking, a lot of outdoors time, camping, um, mountain biking, mm -hmm. you know, love paddle boarding, pretty much if it's outside and it involves activity where that's how I, good stress reliever for yeah, me. So. I love that. And I think that it's important for people to not give up on nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like I think that's something we hear a lot of because clearly people are being, you know, bitten by a tick that gives them this diagnosis mm -hmm. and either they stay in and their family goes out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They kind of give up on the outdoors and it's like, no, that's such a healing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Space. Yeah, put your preventative measures in place mm -hmm. and then go outside mm -hmm. because I, I agree it is such a healing space. And I think I suffered for so long because I didn't feel good enough to do a lot of those activities, whether it was hiking or paddle boarding or whatever the family yeah. was doing. I just like my joint pain and my mm -hmm. fatigue, like I just didn't feel strong enough to do them. And then once I got that back, it's all I want to do. Like, yeah. I just want to be outside and I do put sort of ridiculous measures in place and I'm not, I won't apologize for them. Right. Right. Because there's no need to, we do what we do to, right. to stay safe, but I highly encourage anybody out there who's fearful of that to just figure out what you need to do to keep the ticks off of you. Mm -hmm. Do your tick checks. I don't yes, ma'am. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do your tick checks. Get yourself a headlamp. Get yourself a headlamp. <laughs> Spouse, your partner, a headlamp. Yeah. And, and I believe there's a song I'd like to check you for tips. There yeah. is. There yeah. is. Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley. Would you like to be our sponsor? <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. Because it is like a point to drive home. Yeah. Outside and then check for ticks. Right. Right. And get them off. Yeah. And you can do that. And you can still enjoy the outdoors. And, and I would also say too, like if you mm -hmm. are you know, active and you're hiking regularly, say, like, I remember when we went on a hike out in Narrows or Newport 
what is that hike? Mills Creek? Mills Creek. We went to Mills Creek mm -hmm. and it's a pretty long hike. And I remember feeling really bad when we went out this one day mm -hmm. and I made it halfway mm -hmm. up this really steep incline part of the hike. And I just broke down mm -hmm. and we had to turn around and come back. Yeah. And I remember being in therapy, talking about this and how defeating that felt for me. Like, because I had been really like my endurance. I'm sitting there going, thank God, you so quit bad. halfway up. I'll quit. <laughs> really? Because that was really hard. Yeah, I'm going to say it right here on TV to make you feel better. TV. But whatever. Whatever. One TV. Day. <laughs> but it felt, it, it was really hard for me because. I had been so active for so long and then I was flatlined. Yeah. yeah. Not literally my heart stopped, but just like yeah. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And going out there, I felt like I could do more and then I couldn't. And my therapist was like, go do it again. Yeah. You know, like when yeah. you feel better. So then you can replace like that experience right. with the positive. Right. So I would also encourage if you've been to that point where you have a negative experience doing something you love do it again. Yeah. Because what did we do two weeks after that? We did it again. And went on the longest. Yeah. Just, and it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. When you get the other half, you just walk and walk and walk. And, walk. and you're through rhododendrons. And, and I mean, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's forever. Yeah. But I needed that for mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. 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 You know, so I think everyone needs to like have that, that experience for themselves. Right. And also be able to give yourself some grace, mm -hmm. right? If you get out there and you put your, your oar in the water and you just get out off the dock and yeah. that's as far as you go, you got on that paddleboard, you got in that kayak and you mm -hmm. put your oar in the water and you come back and go a little bit further the next time. Right. Right. Because we need all the wins. Right. Exactly. Get, right. Like yep. ticks suck. Right. What do we always say? Right. But life doesn't have to. That's right. Yeah. That's right. If only yeah. there was a license plate that said ticks. <laughs> if only. If only. <laughs> that is taken in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so our very last question that we ask every single person that we remember to ask on this podcast, <laughs> that we would like for you guys to answer for us is there a song or an artist or an album that brings you joy because you all know better than anybody how much we love music Candace and I and how much it brings us joy mm -hmm. and how appreciative we are that it doesn't cause a reaction for us and so <laughs> what we would like to know is if there is a song or an album or an artist and that brings you joy and it can be just in this moment you know, we are in the holiday season. If it's a Christmas song and that's what's bringing you joy right now, that's totally fine. Or it could be for all time. You know, the song that you know is going to is gonna bring you joy no matter when you pop it on. So ready, set, go. Me? Mark? You? Sure, I'll roll with this one first. Do it. So uh, uh, I am a very eclectic music listener, listening to a lot of different genres and artists but i would say right now probably one of my favorites is and it probably changes on a on a i won't say daily basis but weekly basis would probably be bono went on stephen colbert recently and uh he did a performance of live performance which integrated uh aspects of his new book surrender with with or without you the song playing and it's a six minute version that is just unbelievably incredible and uh i think just right now that's that's one of my new favorite versions of of u2 song with or without you but it, like i said it changes on a on a pretty weekly basis because i listen to music pretty much non-stop all the time when i'm not working so we're listening to the audiobook of that and it is it is really fantastic he's an amazing storyteller it's actually the whole the whole thing kind of brings me joy mm -hmm. yeah good yeah. answer awesome yeah, we'll add that one. one to our list. We'll add that to our list. Recently, the song that has jumped out at me and just brings all grades of giggles and interpretive dance <laughs> is Evie Wonder's Superstition. Oh, nice. It came on in the office today, and I just I stopped treating patients and just cut a rug. I mean, I, just, I, just, I let them see what, what moves I have. And uh <laughs> Outstanding ovation. It was amazing. Yeah. For those of you who don't know Lee personally, he is, I'm going to guess, 100% serious on that. That is, yes, is. exactly what he did. Totally. 
I cut that rug. I love it. That's a good one. It's good too. Oh, Alpha Gal Vodcast gonna gonna play that later. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll have to. Yes. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing that little tidbit with us. Is there anything you guys would add at the end thinking about who's listening, right? Like people who are living with Alpha Gal, other people, other people who might be where Candace and I are, other people who aren't there yet, other people who are newly diagnosed other people who have just had a spouse or a child diagnosed. Is there anything you would speak to them? Any more advice, any more wisdom, any more funny stories, anything else you would tell them? All right. So I'm going to channel my uh, inner scout master here. Ooh. Oh, I like Mark scout master. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say two words, be prepared. <laughs> so the boy scout motto or the scout BSA model motto is be prepared. So Take the time and effort to, to develop your support structure, to know your strategies, to uh, to be able to manage the unknown. And, and, and even with Debbie and Candace being prepared, there are instances where you're not prepared, mm -hmm. but at least you have a game plan. You've got that playbook. You, you know how to how to manage most situations mm -hmm. and we can help you girls de-escalate some of those situations mm -hmm. by being part of that plan, being, being a support model. So mm -hmm. that, I think that's great advice. And I would also add to that, that you taking that frame of mind helps us in the moment too, mm -hmm. right? When we're in this moment where it, even now where it can be scary, even though we get through it faster, it's easier now probably than it's ever been having a support person who knows what to do, who knows the steps to take, who knows the protocol. I think you used that word, Lee. Sure. Helps keep us, well, I won't say helps keep us calm, helps <laughs> keep us calmer than we otherwise would be, yeah. right? Sure. So we really appreciate that because I know both of you go to great lengths to do that for us. Mm -hmm. That's because I've been taught. <laughs> True. I mean, as, as a support person in this whole Shit show. I can say that. Yeah, throw that one down. Um, you know, Candace, Candace has done a real good job of communicating clearly what needs to be done, when it needs to be done. She is her own best advocate. She is the epitome of advocacy for herself. I mean, mm -hmm. she will flat tell you in a heartbeat whether it's going to work or not for her and her allergies. And if it's going to, good. And if it's not, she's leaving. She'll, she'll pack her crap grab the kids and me and, and, and go. So, you know, just knowing who you are, um, communicating that clearly and, and objectively don't emote during all this stuff. If you can get it clearly documented ahead of time, it pulls the emotion out and it makes it a lot easier to, to stick to your guns. Um, you know, be it with, be it with your spouse or a loved one or family members or, or doctors. We fired a few doctors because they, she, she just needed more advocacy. Um, and, and she had to give that to herself. So she opted to go to another, another office, but, uh, yeah, just, just clearly define your protocols, communicate those very clearly and objectively. Um, and, and yeah, that's brilliant yeah. advice oh, too. I'm so proud of the two of you for taking things that matter so much to me and Candace, being prepared and being a support person and learning. Yeah. Cause I think that that's a huge piece of this too. And if yeah. you need help learning how to do that, we have some resources for that. So reach out to me and Candace mm -hmm. or apparently Lee and Mark. Yep. Yes. Yeah. We really want to thank you guys for this super honest, super vulnerable conversation with us. Thank you for the cocktails. <laughs> Thank you for sitting down with us, for dealing fun. with the dog drinking water and shutting the kids up upstairs. <laughs> <It's> the dog. <laughs> Bourbon's gone. We really appreciate you guys. We do. We Thank love you guys. guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. We'll do it again. There we yeah. go. Cheers. Thank you for joining us today on In the Tall Grass. Visit us at twoalphagals.com. That's T-W-O alphagals.com. Or you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at 2 alphagals. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review and help us grow this community. We're all faced with obstacles on our journey, whether it be food allergies or tick-borne diseases. You might outgrow the reactions, but you won't outgrow the person you become. Ticks suck, but life doesn't have to.